Hey Redwine, uh, I saw your response there on my video, so where is moderate Islam? And I think, I think you might have slightly misunderstood what that video was about, first of all. Um, I certainly would not be saying that it doesn't exist, in my opinion. Um, it stands to reason, quite clearly, that if you're presented with a population of people numbering almost a billion, that the large majority of those people, as in any other population of any other group of people, would be decent people who just want to live in peace, who want to be allowed to keep their head down, mind their own business, and not be hassled by anybody. And Muslims are no different from that. So there certainly is moderate Islam out there. Absolutely. I have absolutely no doubt about that. What the video was about was wondering why those two people don't speak up as much as they could. I suppose part of it is due to the fact that they're ordinary decent people who don't want to be hassled. We don't want to put a neck out like any other person who just wants to mind their own business. But the problem is that the people who were up against the extremer side, the fundamentalists, have insinuated themselves in those populations of ordinary people. And it is a situation that has happened before in the past. It's not the first time that this has happened. Algeria comes to mind, where Islamic extremists started off by presenting themselves as protectors of the population against the French occupation, more or less, but ultimately became more and more reactionary and extreme in their opinions, basically narrowing the circle further and further of those people who they considered to be true Islamists and eventually they ended up attacking pretty much everybody. The ordinary decent citizens of Algeria were targeted and bombed and murdered by these people because they eventually thought that only their own little clique were the true Muslims. So what I'm afraid is happening is that some Muslims feel disinclined to speak up against this sort of fundamentalism and extremism because at the moment they feel that first of all, you know, there is negative sentiment towards Islam that cannot be denied and of course then it's easy to take the approach of the enemy of my enemy is my friend and say, well, they are protecting us against you know, America who is certainly not treating us the way they should be doing. But it is going to end in tears and I think that, that, that it's therefore important, no matter how they might feel about it, that they should stand up against this. That the decent Muslims should stand up against the extremists and the fundamentalists. And it is their society. You know, these people are like vipers under the grass of their society and it's their responsibility to root these out and chuck them out as unwanted. And that is what I'm saying. I, I'm not seeing enough of that, although I am quite encouraged by what I have seen by some people. So I think it's a realization that's starting to dawn. And I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic. But what I would object to is something else you said. You were talking about 1790 and you were saying, you know, prior to that, Islam, they were the good guys. I find that a bit weird, to be perfectly frank with you. I don't think before the, the, before the arrival of the idea of, of constitutional monarchy other than a few experiments with republics, I don't think any any regime, whether it was in Europe or the Ottoman Empire or any
anywhere else could be classified as as good guys you know they were basically all despotic you might have the odd benevolent dictator but most of it was just despotism there certainly weren't any good guys I, f I found it you know when you when I heard you say that it was almost as if you were saying that in World War two Stalinist Russia were the good guys for no other reason that they weren't quite as bad as Nazi Germany. That, that that sort of reasoning doesn't wash with me. In actual fact, I would suggest that maybe you read something, right? You you mentioned a couple of books there yourself. Here's one that I read. It's a novel. So it's not a history book or anything. It's a novel. But it was a bit of an eye-opener when I read it. Tim Willock's The Religion. First of all, it deals with the siege of Malta. That's the backdrop to the, to the story, and I won't go into the story. But the siege of Malta took place in 1565, and I can assure you that the Muslims in the story, who besieged the Christian city of Malta, the citadels of Malta, were far from good guys. The Sultan in question was basically pretty much a bastard who just sent thousands and thousands of people to their deaths for no other reason than he was too proud to admit that the original strategy was wrong and that he should have a better idea. The Christians weren't much better. It was just one set of fundamentalist ideas pitted against another and neither of them came off looking very good. So to say that by s before 1719 the Muslims were the good guys, no, that doesn't wash with me. So fair point on one hand, not so fair point on the other hand. I don't think anybody can be absolved here. Fundamentalism of any description is always wrong. 